I don't know what it is, but I love having the original batteries in a remote. I mean, like, I know I'm playing with fire. I know they're eventually going to, you know, go flat and then leak. But these are like 13 years old and they still work. And you better believe I'm going to use them until they're dead. I think I mentioned in a previous video the problems with the Raspberry Pi built-in audio. It has a problem with Kodi where every once in a while when you play a video, there's no sound. And normally you just hit stop and try playing again. But when it's all an automated background process, it means that that entire episode is muted and you just have to go to a different channel and you can't watch that episode. Uh, that's the first problem. The second problem is the volume is very quiet. So my solution has been to order these little USB audio devices. Um, I saw these in a review someone did for alternative Raspberry Pi audio systems and this one was quite cheap. So I ordered a bunch of them because it's shipping from China and if I order just one and it works and I have to wait another two or three months for it to ship again, uh, yeah, that, that's no good. Future me dubbing over the video because I didn't talk over it to explain what's going on. So these USB audio devices won't fit with the USB flash drive also plugged in on these older Pis. So I just removed the plastic casing. Now it fits fine. And the second problem I ran into is there's only two USB ports on these older Pies. So if I want to go in and change some settings with a wireless keyboard and mouse setup, I have to unplug the USB flash drive. So here's me selecting the new USB device. It's pretty simple. It's called ALSA. I later solved this problem by just plugging in a powered USB hub, which is way easier than going through all this mess. So I noticed when I took this out of the plastic casing that it seemed to really only be uh, attached via these four solder points. That's kind of weak and I was like, well, I could just leave it there, have it sitting. But then I took a closer look at the second one that I've opened up and you do have these two tabs for the outer part of the connector and they just didn't solder them in. Like there's a solder pad there on the back side. They soldered... no, they didn't solder anything. Yeah. Come on, focus. Strong. Much stronger. All right. I finished three of them. And, uh, yeah, when you have a long USB stick, it's a little bit of a pain, but it, it fits. It fits on all three if you remove the plastic casing. If you have a newer Raspberry Pi that say has four ports, like that one over there, you won't have a problem, but I'm using old school vintage Pis. And yeah, uh, none of these so far have had any missing audio between episodes. I'm going to keep an eye on them, but they seem great and they're much louder. That trick that I did before in one of the past videos where I cranked the volume, the default volume when playing a video, I've had to back off. So you're going to have to do that and it's Especially tricky if you did the other mod I did where you remove the on-screen display. You have to take this remote in, undo the mod for the on-screen display, adjust the volume back down to where you like it, then redo the mod for that. But yeah, these USB audio devices, like, if you're going to use the Pi for anything audio related, you really have to. I never realized how bad the built-in audio is on these, but it sucks. Well, I think that was a success. Here's, for reference, um, just an over-the-air broadcast volume. And if I go back to broadcast, what's this one? She took me to a So I would say that that's pretty good. But overall, I'm I'm very happy with this. And so far, let's go back to those. Go through all the channels here. I've got my analog CBC and my 
HDCBC. Uh, why? Well, why not? It, the RF modulator has, or the um, digital tuner box has a RF modulator output, so why not tack it in there? So the next part of this video, when it arrives, uh, is replacing that two-port splitter. It's a, uh, well, I'll show you. Replacing this thing. I've ordered a proper combiner. It's a splitter combiner made by Channel Plus. So I'm kind of improperly using this to combine two signals into one. And that degrades all the video quality. It degrades the antenna. It degrades all of these. So it's slightly noisier using this, but really that was the only way I was able to get as much crap into here, into this one line as possible. Because this has, okay. So we'll start over here. This is the antenna input. And then I've got two outputs. I've got one output going over to here. And then the, uh, this is going to the input. And then this output goes to here. Second output on there goes all the way up and over into my DTV box that has that uh, channel four. Ah, yes, this is going into this input here. So this is the second set. So these are the first two sets. So there's four channels plus uh, the antenna. And then this one has the um, digital TV box output plus another two analog channels. And then they get combined into one, which goes over to the splitter, which then goes off to all the TVs. So I'm hoping that this combiner will help. I played around with these channels a lot, especially now that um, the FCC and CRTC have both shrunk the UHF band. Like they got rid of the channels in the teens. I think some states did, but it looks like all the Canadian channels are moving that way and they got rid of a lot of higher channels, I think above like 30 or something. It's a very small band of, of UHF channels now. And the problem is, two of these RF modulators don't really go above, uh, I think it's like channel 30 or something anyway. So they don't go very high. I, I don't have a lot of options to try and avoid existing UHF DTV broadcast to try and fill in the gaps. And as well, some of these are acting up and won't go too low or too high. Like they, they just seem to only sit in a small band and it seems to be like a a PLC issue, a controller issue in these. So it took a lot of fiddling to try and find channels that don't interfere with each other, don't interfere with the digital broadcast, and just work. So, yeah. What I plan to do is add one more of these because uh, the layout, I believe, is uh, weather channel, security channel, uh, two Raspberry Pis, playing TV shows, one Raspberry Pi playing a TV show, and then the analog version of CBC. But now that I've moved this to channel four with no issues because there's nothing on VHF low normally, I have a duplicate. So it's, it's on channel 22 and channel four. So now I can take channel 22 and add yet another Raspberry Pi. And I still have plans for the audio on this one, which right now is just an iPod shuffling music. I want to look for a circuit that will switch over to a different input. So you have your primary input that's playing unless it sees or detects audio on the secondary input and switches over. I know you can buy them, but they're kind of expensive if you can even find them. But I feel like the circuit would be easy enough to build because then this will be just playing, you know, iPod music unless I use the Chromecast audio and then it would switch over to that. I think that would be neat. One week later. All right, got fully working channels now, pictures a lot cleaner. And we got so many things to watch. And it's all stuff that I enjoy. That's the bottom line here. And it blends in nicely with the local stations. 
Uh, this color test pattern is because I disconnected the VGA input from that VGA to composite converter from the security NVR. What's nice is if you disconnect it, you get this um, these color bars, these NTSC color bars or whatever they're officially called, which is useful when you're doing stuff. So I can just unplug it and then get my, my color generator. And the only channel that is still a problem, and I think it's just a weak RF modulator output on that digital box, is the uh, DTV box output. It just it's just a shitty, weak, noisy output. You, it's hard to fix that. Even running it through an amplifier, it just still sucks. But it, it looks way better than it did before. Uh, so there's that. And at least on this TV, uh, it tunes in everything very nicely. And then back. The only channel I don't get on this one is channel 13, which locally is, uh, I think the call letters are still CHMI, but uh, it's city TV and it's broadcast from a, a town, I guess, nearby. And yeah, it's difficult for me to get with my antenna. It's not high enough. So only some TVs in the house get it. But the picture quality on the rest of these channels is excellent. And of course, the background of my insanity. Here's the new uh, Pi that I added. This is a Pi 2, I believe. So I made a little crappy adapter to go from the TRRS 4-pin 3.5mm jack to a video output. Super half-assed. It's great. iPod's still playing music for the Weather Channel. Uh, all of these now have these USB audio adapters on them. I removed the cases so they sit nicer with the USB sticks. This is the Simpsons channel, as you can see here. And that USB stick is dying. It's a Sony and it's been giving me problems. So it craps out. I can't even plug it into, it's a USB 3 uh, uh, USB stick. I can't even plug it into a USB 3 port on my computer. It just disappears and reappears constantly. I have to plug it in through a USB 2 hub for it to work. So it's, I got to replace that one. That one didn't work before I set this up and then somehow it just was working for this. So I left it and now that I've touched it, it's not working again. And we've got a sitcom channel, again with a little USB, weather channel, yeah, Simpsons, the old cartoon channel. And then this is the unlabeled one. That's all Adult Swim. Then this is my DTV box that I just have set to channel four, showing a local CBC affiliate. And I went and labeled all these, what the channels are set to, because I would always get confused. And my new combiner came. This has increased the quality ever so slightly. I think really the best way to get, you know, good, good picture quality on everything would be to run all these in a proper amplifier slash combiner. But those are expensive and I'm doing this on the cheap. This was like six bucks and it works. So who cares? But yeah, cleaned up all the wiring a little bit. It's still a organized chaos. Yeah, so I mean, that's it. Mm -hmm.